Welcome back to TechNut. You're watching the fourth episode in our series on the HP Gen 8 microserver. In this episode, we will be installing Hyper-V. The first thing that we will be taking care of is the installation of Microsoft Server 2012 R2 Hyper-V. The reason that we are not using a standard edition of Windows Server for our hypervisor is that the license for Hyper-V Server is completely free. Microsoft Server Hyper-V is a stripped-down version of the standard Windows edition and does only offer the core interface, which means you have no GUI for the configuration. It will require some more work, however, we're going to take you through all the steps. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. For the installation, two files are necessary. The Microsoft Server ISO and the HP RAID drivers. Start with running the HP executable. Select the Extract option and extract the content to a new folder on your desktop. Close the installer and start the HP Remote Console. Open the Virtual Drives menu and select the option Image File CD DVD. Select the ISO on the desktop. If your server has already passed the step where you can open the boot menu, just click Restart. Once the boot menu option becomes available, click F11. Once the boot menu is displayed, click 1 to boot from the virtual CD-ROM. Press any key to get the installation started. First, set your time and currency format and your keyboard layout. Next, click the Install Now button. Accept the license terms and click Next. Select the custom installation option. As you can see, no drives are found, that's because the drivers are not installed. Go into virtual drive, select the folder option and open the folder that we extracted the content to previously. Click load driver, click the OK button. The installation will now scan for available RAID drivers. Select the B120i RAID controller driver and click Next. The driver is now being installed. Once the installation is completed, our SSD shows up in the list of available drives. Click Next to start the installation. The rest of the installation is automatic. You can click the annotation on the screen to skip ahead. The installation is now completed and we're going to do some initial configuration. Start with selecting a password for the local administrator account. The first step is going to be configuring remote desktop. Press 7, click enter. Select E to enable and select 2 for the less secure option. 
Once the prompt is displayed, you're done. Next, we're configuring the network settings. Select option number 8 and press enter. You'll see that our network interface has been assigned the index of 11. So we're going to enter that and press enter. Your current IP configuration will be displayed. These addresses, as you can see, were assigned by DHCP. We're going to use the same settings, but set them as static. In your case, you might want to make exclusions to your DHCP range so that no other device tries to grab your server's IP address. Start by selecting option number 1 and press enter. We're going to select S for static, and we're going to enter the IP address that we'd like. We're going to use the default net mask, and we're going to use our router as the gateway. Next, we'll have to assign the DNS addresses. We're going to select option number 2 and enter the IP address of our router. We're not going to use a secondary DNS, so you get back to the menu and select 4 to return to the main menu. Now is also a good time to check your date and time to make sure that nothing's incorrect. In our case, everything is looking good, so we're going to go ahead and close the window. We're not going to change the name of the server to something more recognizable. Select option number 2 and enter the new name of the server. We're going to select yes to restart as it's now time to deal with the RAID configuration for the hard drives. The server is now booting. Stand by to press F5 to run the HP Smart Storage Administrator. Once F5 has been pressed, wait for the tool to load. Select the RAID controller from the menu. Select Configure and Create Array. Click Select All and Create the Array. We're going to use the default settings, so click Create Logical Drive. The array has now been created, so click Finish. Exit the utility by clicking the X on top of the screen. Confirm. Click the power icon and select Reboot. Once the server has rebooted, we're going to sign back in again. It's now time to partition the newly created RAID drive. We're going to open the command prompt in the background and type in disk part. We're not going to run the command list disk to see the available disks. As you can see, our 5.5 terabyte drive is available. We're going to select it by typing in select disk one and we're going to convert it to a GPT drive. This will allow us to create partitions greater than 2 terabytes. And if we run the list disk command again, you'll see that the disk 1 now has a star in the GPT field. We're going to create a primary partition. We're going to format it. We're going to set the file system to NTFS. And we're going to specify that it's going to be a quick format. Once the format is completed, we're going to go ahead and assign the drive a letter. By typing in assign letter, in this case we're choosing D. Type in exit. Don't type it as I do, type it correctly. And we're done. As you remember from a few steps back, we enable RDP. So you should be able to RDP to the server now. However, in most cases, there is an additional step that needs to be performed. And as you can see, our server is not connecting. Go back into the server and run the following command. It will allow remote desktop connections through the Windows firewall. And back on the client, we can now see a password prompt when we're trying to connect. 
Typing in .backslash administrator and entering your password should sign you in. Now it's time to connect to the server using the Hyper-V manager. This will later on be done from an administration server, however at this time we need to install the Hyper-V manager locally. Open the start menu and search for add or remove Windows features. Select the Hyper-V management tools and click OK. The tools will now be installed. Once the tools are ready, they will be available in the start menu. Just open it up and type in Hyper-V. You will see the Hyper-V manager. In order to manage a Hyper-V server outside of a domain, the same user account needs to be present on both the server and the client. If you're unsure of your local username, go into CMD and type in who am I. We will now need to create a local administrator account on the server with the same username. Select option number 3 and press enter. Enter your local username and press enter again. Type in your desired password. Please note that the password of these accounts needs to be the same both on the server and on your computer. If you need to change the password on the computer, I'm going to show you that right now. Back on your client, open up the start menu and go to administrative tools. Open up computer management, select local users and set the password for your local account. For these user accounts to work in sync, it's also necessary for the computer and the server to be in the same workgroup. Open up the properties of your local computer and you will see the workgroup on the bottom. On the server, it's displayed in the blue window on the top. To allow communication through the firewall on the server, we need to run four commands. These are, as always, available in the video description. We are soon ready to connect Hyper-V Manager to the server, however two more steps are necessary. On the client, start run by pressing Windows R. Type in DCOM CNFG and press OK. In the utility, expand component services, expand computers and select the properties of my computer. Open the tab COM security and click edit limits. Select the user anonymous logon and allow remote access. As there is currently no DNS in place, we need to add the DNS name to the host file on the computer. Open the start menu and start PowerShell as an administrator. Type in the following command. This will open the host file in Notepad. Create a new row in the file and enter the IP address of the server. Press tab and enter the name of the server. Save the file and close it. Run the following command to trust the server. We should now be able to connect. Open up Hyper-V Manager, right click and select connect to server and enter the name of the server. As you can see, we are now connected and ready to move on. Congratulations, you've made it through the fourth and trickiest part of the series. If you've encountered any problems, please let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for the next episode where we will be installing the Active Directory server.